Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a charcoal drawing of these birch trees in the wind on a summer day. Let's have a look. Initially I had no idea on what the composition was going to look like. I wanted a couple of trees in the foreground. Initially I thought it would be three or four maybe but I didn't really know what I was going to put in the background or in the midground for that matter so I kind of developed it as I went along but here I'm starting with the sky I'm going to put down a little bit of vine charcoal in the top part of my paper because I want to add a little bit of value to that part of the paper where the sky is going to be because in order for me to draw the clouds first I need to have a little bit of value so that I can create contrast with the clouds using my eraser and of course I have to start with the sky because I'm going to be drawing other elements in front of it so I don't know how much of that sky will be visible a bit later but I still have to draw the sky first now I'm using my kneaded eraser to try to pick off a little bit of that charcoal and to see if I can come up with some nice looking clouds, nice looking shapes that look like clouds. I'm trying to make them as random as possible. First I dab a little bit with a kneaded eraser to see what kind of, uh, what kind of shapes I can get. And when I finish with the kneaded eraser, and this is a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser, I then pick up a Kohinoor pencil eraser and I do a little bit of refining by making the edges, the top edges usually, a little bit lighter because they are, uh, they are a little bit cleaner because there is usually a bit more contrast on the top edge of the clouds because of the light source which is usually coming from above. Now I shaded the sky so the the top part of the paper is a little bit darker than the lower part of that sky near the horizon. And now I'm going to draw some hills. I'm going to draw some hills on that horizon. I still don't know uh, at this stage what it's going to look like, but I'm going to keep adding elements until I'm happy with the way it looks. And the sky looks pretty good now, but like I said, I will be drawing all kinds of stuff in front of it, so maybe some part of that effort will be wasted, but it's just the way I had to do, uh, it's just the way I have to work. I have to work from the background to the foreground uh, because I'm going to be kind of stacking more elements on top of uh, one another to achieve a feeling of depth in my landscape. I also started using uh, charcoal pencils a little bit, but here I'm back to using a piece of vine charcoal. Vine charcoal is natural soft charcoal and I'm here using it to draw some trees on, on one of these hills. Again, I'm not really committing to any specific shape, I'm just kind of playing around with this piece of vine charcoal trying to see if I can come up with some interesting shapes. I want a row of trees and bushes in the background and I am producing something that kind of looks like the canopies of trees and all kinds of foliage as seen from a distance. I'm later going to refine those using a uh, tutilin or a blending stump. So I drew 
uh, one taller tree and then some bushes and another taller tree here and maybe a few more here on the right side as well. I don't know if all of them will be visible once I finish but like I said I am kind of building up my scene gradually adding elements uh, one in front of the other as I'm trying to create a feeling of distance and depth in my scene. It's not a very large piece that I'm working on, it's not a very large piece of paper. The paper is about five times nine inches in size or maybe six times nine inches. So a slightly smaller charcoal sketch but it should be interesting. I'm now using a charcoal pencil to add some areas of darker value in that foliage, in those canopies, just to create a bit of variation in terms of value and texture, even though I don't want to produce too much contrast and too much texture on those objects in the background. Generally, I try to reserve the darkest darks and the lightest lights for the objects in the foreground as well as the largest amount of texture because um, the things in the foreground appear to have the most detail to us while the things in the background kind of fade away into the distance because of the atmospheric effect and the limitations of the human eye so I want to try to imitate that effect in the way that I use my tools and with the selection of the, to the tools that I'm using I use a pencil eraser to draw some indications of uh, tree trunks and I added some, some more details on those hills in the distance but now I'm cleaning up uh, the lighter portion of the tree trunk and um, I'm going to start adding some foliage and some branches. I'm going to do this in a combination of uh, of vine charcoal and charcoal pencils. The charcoal pencils I'm using are Morris and Woodless charcoal pencils. You can use any brand. I just prefer Woodless charcoal pencils. So I have to use a sharp charcoal pencil to uh, refine the shape of some of these branches. And while you're drawing them you have to remember a couple of things. Try to make your hand wiggle a little, bit, a little bit and try to make sure that the branches taper as they grow out. That will make them look realistic if you, do, if you do these two things. I don't need to draw too many of those branches. Not all of them will be visible. Just a few of them will be enough. And now I'm starting to work on the foliage. Let me just do a quick demonstration on this quick and effective way to draw uh, foliage, to draw lots of leaves. And I, I just think that vine charcoal is probably the best tool for this. But if you want to, if you want to get them to look darker, you need to press a little bit harder. But the thing is, because of the shape and the nature of uh, vine charcoal, it's very easy to produce something that looks like a bunch of leaves um, just by making marks like this and um, the thing to remember is you need to try to vary your stroke a little bit both in terms of its size and length but also uh, direction you don't want to make it all in the same direction if you do that um, it won't look very natural, but if you vary your direction and your shape and the density, how tightly they are packed in different uh, places, I think it will actually look very, very realistic. So that's what I'm going to keep doing. So I'm going to keep adding those marks using a piece of vine charcoal. And you can see how easy it is. It does take a little bit of practice and now here in this part of the foreground where my branches and the foliage are kind of overlapping with the, with the objects in the background 
I need to make sure that those leaves stand out against the background so I need to press a little bit harder to make them darker. I skipped over a part of the footage here because um, it was mostly repetitive but as you can see I added quite a bit of foliage using this same technique. So it takes a little bit of patience, I'm not gonna lie, this is a process that will take um, maybe 10-15 minutes depending on the size of the tree, sometimes less, but it's worth it and like I said vine charcoal is a perfect tool for this because it allows you to create a lot of volume in those uh, in those leaves, uh, lots of foliage without actually putting in too much effort. Um, now I'm working on the texture of the tree bark of this birch tree and I'm adding some of these darker darker bits, darker areas in the tree bark some of these cracks and knots and things like that and I'm adding them kind of randomly here and there just to make the tree bark more interesting but notice how before I started working on the tree bark I actually shaded the whole tree trunk first I erased the right side of the tree trunk to create contrast between the background and the lighter portion of the tree trunk and by the way as you can tell the light source is coming from the right side because the right side is a lot lighter and the left side is the shadow side so first I established that contrast so that I can show some volume and shape in my tree and after that I started adding some details and adding some texture to that tree bark to make it look even more realistic but without es establishing those larger contrasts um, your drawing will fail to convey a feeling of volume and depth. I'm adding some more uh, bushes here in the foreground behind those trees. I need them uh, not only to balance out my composition but also to have something in the foreground so that I can create contrast with the uh, with the tree trunks so one of the things that's really good about drawing landscapes is how much freedom you have to to uh, to modify the elements and the positioning of the elements in your drawing if you want to create more contrast you can move things around uh, create some darker areas maybe add some darker objects and behind the lighter ones or you can um, you can modify the amount of value you can modify the amount of bushes the amount of trees and things like that you can do all sorts of things here I'm using my pencil eraser to draw uh, a path leading from one of those hills downwards and winding downwards towards this hill in the foreground where the trees are. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of making it wind downwards a little bit and adding a bit of shadow on the side and adding some suggestions of clumps of grass and maybe some distant bushes and things like that. Nothing specific, just a few details here and there to make the to make the scene a little more interesting and detailed. I'm adding some lighter blades of grass in front of these bushes using that darker background to create some contrast adding some some indications of um, some indications of branches and uh, blades of grass and things like that whatever I can do with a pencil eraser to create some contrast and to draw some lighter shapes. I'm going to continue that dirt path here in the foreground. Um, it's kind of disappearing beyond this hill downwards and then it's continuing here in the foreground. And I'm going to draw a little bit of grass on both sides of it. I 
I'm using a fine charcoal to draw some suggestions of blades of grass or clumps of grass here and there and as I'm drawing them I'm trying to make sure that the grass which is further away from the viewer is a little bit smaller in terms of shape and height uh, than the the one in than the blades of grass than the blades of grass in the foreground because the closer they are to the viewer the larger and the taller they will appear of course you don't have to stick to that completely because um, the length of the grass varies but generally the objects which are further away from us will appear a little bit smaller and shorter. Now notice I also added a touch of value randomly to some parts of the tree trunk because I wanted to, I wanted to make it look like there's a little bit of shadow on the tree trunk coming from uh, some other canopies or maybe some other branches from the nearby trees. And now I'm drawing the other birch tree. Uh, like I said, initially I wasn't really sure how many trees I wanted to put there. Uh, initially I thought maybe it was going to be maybe three or four, maybe even five trees. I didn't really know, but eventually I decided I do not want to burden the scene um, and cram all of these um, tree trunks together. I wanted to simplify things a little bit and I thought that less would be more in this case because the foliage would already take up a good portion of the background of the of that upper part uh, of the paper and cover uh, much of the background so I, I wanted some of the background to remain visible so that I can still have that feeling of depth like there's more stuff behind those trees so I wanted to uh, I didn't want to stack quite as many objects in the foreground. Notice that I'm using uh, the foliage as well uh, as a way to create contrast between the tree trunk and uh, and the and the darker areas around it. So foliage is a lot darker and it's kind of further defining the right edge or the lighter edge, the lighter side of my tree trunks and here I'm drawing more and more of that foliage using the same technique that I demonstrated earlier and you can see that I'm making some of the branches droop downwards a little bit and uh, like some of these uh, branches and twigs and leaves are hanging downwards and notice how a lot of these leaves are seem separated or disconnected from the others uh, that's because in between the leaves there are a, a bunch of smaller twigs that aren't really visible at this distance so I can just draw a bunch of foliage like this and it will actually end up looking very realistic without me having to draw every single branch and every single twig because those wouldn't really be visible anyway at, 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 uh, at a distance so I need to cover a little bit of background here on the right in the center and then I'm gonna uh, move on to shading and um, of course working on the texture and the details of this tree on the right. The, it's already been shaded, I've already established uh, the light side and the shadow side and of course uh, the the light source is the same, the light source is on the left side so both trees are a little bit lighter on the right side and the left side of them is a little bit darker, it's the shadow side. So once I establish uh, those basic relationships I start adding some details to the tree bark and I start adding some more texture some of these horizontal lines uh, some of the some of these uh, darker spots and cracks in the bark and things like that and another thing that I like to do on top of those details is I like to drag my charcoal pencil on top of on top of those uh, darker areas to create some random texture. I just drag my pencil and the pencil naturally and spontaneously creates a bit of random texture. That's what I call uh, allowing the pencil to work for you because you're not really putting in too much effort while the pencil is creating an illusion of detail without you actually 
um, having to put uh, too much work into it. So I drew two trees eventually as you can see. My tree on the left has a friend as Bob Ross would put it and another thing that he often talked about were happy accidents so when I uh, use my pencil to produce some random uh, illusion of detail, some random texture you can call that happy accidents because those are there are a lot of things in the drawing that I didn't really intend to do but I ended up keeping them anyway because I liked the way they looked. I'm just adding a bit more detail and uh, value to this area in the foreground because I want to make the path a little more interesting and detailed and I'm doing the same thing with the, with the grass here trying to add a little more depth and break it into segments and clumps and things like that. I'm going to add a bit of shadow to these trees and of course I'm going to try to stay consistent with my light source which is coming from the right side so the tree trunk will be uh, the tree trunks will be casting their shadows to the left I'm going to add those shadows in using a piece of iron charcoal and I'm maybe going to add a few indications of shadow uh, coming from the canopies as well and then I'm going to blend that in with the brushes and then I'm going to work on top of that using a pencil eraser adding some lighter details maybe like some of these uh, lighter blades of grass are sticking out and getting more light from above and here I'm adding um, the shadows to the to the other tree trunk and maybe some more shadows here in the lower right corner maybe like th uh, th those shadows are coming from coming from some other trees that aren't visible here on this piece of paper that aren't in the scene so I'm adding all of those details and pretty much um, wrapping things up because I've already filled the paper I'm just uh, refining some of the details in the foreground but all of my elements are already in the place and I've already defined the larger relationships in terms of the amount of value I'm hoping that my scene makes sense now there are a couple of hills in the background and the path which is leading uh, towards the towards this hill in the foreground where we have a couple of these birch trees and their branches and leaves are kind of swaying in the gentle wind the gentle breeze that was my general idea I'm just refining the appearance of the canopy a little bit adding some more detail adding a bit more grass here and there to see if I can um, improve the improve the appearance of those canopies even though I think they already look very very detailed if I try to do that with a charcoal pencil I think the process would have been much slower and much more difficult um, the vine charcoal allowed me to create that foliage very quickly and this whole scene took about an hour and a half to draw maybe a little bit more than that uh, but it's not really a difficult thing to draw if you want to practice things like that you can always start from smaller paper sizes they're good for practice and um, you can also try to draw something like this yourself um, here as you can see I removed the tape and the board under the drawing and I already sprayed it with a bit of fixative that's why it looks maybe a little bit darker and blurrier uh, the fixative has that effect and I like to use lots of it but it also uh, pushes the range of value a little bit making the darker areas a little bit darker I put my signature in the lower left corner I think the drawing looks good now and um, I'm not really gonna do too much to it I think it's mostly done the only thing that I maybe uh, could modify a little bit are some of these branches on the on the tree on the right because uh, maybe some of them need to be a little bit more 
visible so I'm gonna go over some of them one more time with a charcoal pencil just to give them a little bit more value and to define the shape a bit better because I don't want all that foliage to seem like it's hanging in mid-air I want some of it to be connected to some of these larger branches and there it is my drawing is done I hope you like it don't forget to check out my other videos and I'll see you in the next one bye for now